and we back. Today is Sunday, and Sunday is for NFL football. Now, on this channel for the past couple years, I've only exclusively uploaded NBA-related stuff. But if you look into the archives, and I mean deep and deep into the archives, there was a period of time where I uploaded Madden. Yes, I used to be invested in the NFL. I used to be able to tell you coaches, uh, uh, old linemen, I used to be invested. But then I made a decision. It's either the NFL or the NBA. And I had way more love for the NBA than the NFL, so I got rid of this and I focused solely on this. This is a great decision. Today's video, we're creating an NFL team in 2K. What sense does that make? I'll explain. I was going through the comment section and for the past couple weeks, I've been seeing this challenge from Jude Thomas. Now I saw this challenge. I just had it in the archives. I had it in the back of the file for a Sunday for me to complete this challenge because it just makes sense. Here it is. We have to trade for a quarterback, running back, wide receiver, tight end, O-line, D, D-line, linebacker, cornerback, safety, and the kicker. But of course, we're not going out to get Tom Brady. It has like a basketball twist on everything. For example, our quarterback had to have averaged over eight assists, which makes sense because the quarterback is the thrower and the passer in the NBA, eight assists. Our running back has to have a high usage rate, which makes sense because you're handing it off to the running back a bunch. Our wide receiver has to be a player who shoots over 80% on assisted field goals. Do I need to go into advanced analytics for today's challenge? It's possible. And every single thing has their own little NBA thing associated with it. And once we get to it, we'll talk about it, okay? So this should be a fun challenge, Jude. Thank you so much. Be sure to leave a like. Today is Sunday, and it is about the NFL, but it's also my birthday. I'm, I'm 24. I'm entering my Kobe, a recipe to the Mamba. I'm entering my Kobe, and all I want for you for my birthday is for you to leave a like on the video. Even if you've never done it before. This is my one birthday gift. Leave a like, and let's see if we can break some all-time KOT for a Q records. As always, we have to randomly select our team, so I'm going to close my eyes and stop in three, and two, and one. The Clippers need our help. Yes, they yes they do. Hey, man, the Clippers are so lucky because right when they were about to get eliminated from, oh, my God, we ended up with a top pick. And if we end up with Paul George, I'm going to be heated. Um, <laughs> when they got eliminated from the playoffs, I was this close to dropping a rebuild in the Clippers. And I wish I did because I know that video would have banged, but now it's not as topical. Let's see if they ended up drafting Paul George for me because that would be just funny. They gave us Donovan Mitchell. All right, Donovan Mitchell, Yusuf Nurkic, Derrick Rose. Shout out to D. Rose. Let's go. Uh, Marcus Moore Sr., Bogey, Aaron Baines. Actually, let's make sure everybody's in prime position while I'm talking about it. I'm super excited for this challenge, man. I'm so, and I'm also super excited to see how many likes this video is going to get because I believe we're going to do something great uh, for, for the birthday. So let me just make sure everybody's good. Uh, oh, we have Rick of the Year, Dylan Windler on the team. We may have to keep him. So number one is our quarterback. We need to trade for somebody that averaged over eight assists a game. We do not have that on our roster whatsoever. And it'll probably be best if I do some research. So let's see the, the possible players we can trade for. Wow. So honestly, we only have six players to choose from. We won't be able to pay, trade for LeBron. We won't be able to trade for Luka. We won't be able to trade for Dame. So that really boils down to either Ben Simmons, who's a possibility, Ricky Rubio. Oh, that's it. Because Trey Young is going to be untouchable as well. So we really only have two players to choose from. And that is Ben Simmons and Ricky Rubio. And I'm okay with trading for Ricky Rubio in this situation. Um, CJ Miles in a first round pick that's top 10 protected don't really matter too much uh, the Bulls accept that trade so we have our quarterback Ricky Rubio is our quarterback he might end up be ended up being a backup quarterback you feel me he may not be started for us in this video but nonetheless he fits the quarterback criteria now we got to think about our running back who we mentioned has to have a usage percentage over 27 percent now I don't know how many players are going to have that so we got to go back to statistics. So it has to be higher than 27. And luckily, there's like 32 players to choose from, which is great. The highest is going to be Giannis, Luka, James Harden, Trey Young, Bradley. But we have so many players to choose from, right? He said 27%. 27%. So we're shut off here at 32 of Chris Dasperzingis. And a lot of players to choose from. Perfect. So I'm going to keep this up while I'm going out there and trying to make some trades. Now, technically... We can just keep Derrick Rose on the roster. Derrick Rose had a usage percentage of 31.6. That's top 10 in the entire league. <laughs> Derrick Rose is staying on the team. I'm sorry. Uh, fight me if you want to. D. Rose is staying on the roster. So we have our running back in Derrick Rose. Next is our wide receiver. Trade for a player who shoots over 80% on assisted field goals. 
What the heck is that? I have to find, I gotta find the right statistic. It took me a very long time, but I think I finally found what this guy was talking about. 80s and above, these are the players we have to choose from. I think. I could be completely wrong here. But he gave an example of Chris Stapps for Zingas. And Chris Stapps for Zingas right here says 81%. And he said over 80%. So it got to be right. It's got to be right. So pretty much anybody from here to the top of the list fits the criteria of this. And I see a lot of players that are not very good. So we can like put this one as like one of the bad players 10th man on a rotation type players if we really want to but there are also some pretty decent players in here like chris desperate like draymond green's big old contract but he, he danny green um matisse Stiebel. so there is a de some decent players in here we just got to figure out which one fits what we want and the guy we're deciding to go with is jj reddick over here it says uh 89% of his shots were assisted on which makes sense it's jj reddick he's coming off screens he's shooting threes he's gonna stick and he's going to be on our team. So, so far, we've done three trades. None of the, or I, I'm sorry, we have three positions done. We have our quarterback, we have our running back, and we have a wide receiver in JJ Reddick. Okay, let's see what the next one is. Trade for a player who averages over three screen assists per game. And the example who gave, he gave us was Nikola Jokic. Now, we can try to trade for Jokic, but I don't want to use the examples he gave us because he gave us those. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to go to the guy that like set records for a screen assist center rudy gobert rudy gobert man what team does he play for he plays for the boston celtics let's go try to get rudy gobert and he'll be the first like all-star caliber player that we potentially trade for here i think i'm gonna trade him use of nurkic because um you know center for center situation we throw you kelly olenic as well i may have to get something back from y'all what do y'all have who, who do y'all have this young mark hale doesn't make sense uh Eric Pascal, we throw you a pick and then some seconds. You want these second round picks, don't you? I know you, not the first. Hey, that's a deal. That's a deal. Okay, so we have our screen. This is guy, Rudy Gobert. I don't know the exact number per game Rudy Gobert set, but I know he led the league last year. So I'm assuming he was still in the conversation to lead the league this year. I'm not going to research it, though. I'm just not. I'm, I'm, I'm not at that point. So this could completely derail the challenge, but I'm pretty confident that he led the league in screen assists this year. If he wasn't number one, he was like number two. Um, we don't want to keep these guys on the same team, so we may have to end up dealing Donovan Mitchell. But let's see what the next one is. Trey for a player to average more than two offensive rebounds per game, and that is our O-lineman. It's just my luck that the official NBA website is like down for some reason that I'm recording this video. So we can't go there. And if I go here, it's giving you like all time most seasons lead in league offensive rebounds that's actually really impressive eight seasons leading the league in offensive rebounds but that's not what i'm looking for this is going to be a team stat i'm not looking for team stats either i need wait okay official players wait i think this is it 2020 season per game offensive rebounds okay so we need to get one of these players that averaged over two but then i see a name like doran finney smith and be like wait is this real did doran finney okay time to look it up it actually is real. Doran Finney-Smith really averaged two offensive rebounds per game. I'm sorry, Doran Finney-Smith. I disrespected you right there in that moment. All right, so we need a different guy. We need a different guy. And a guy that looks pretty good to me would either be Dwight Howard. That's the budget option. Zubats would also be a budget option. But I think, I think I'm going to trade for Dwight Howard here. I think I got to trade for Dwight Howard here. And I know we still haven't done a big splash. And I'm hoping that we end up doing that splash later in the video. We can always revisit something. You know what I'm saying? We can always revisit something. Trey Finder has us trading Aaron Baines. Um, what teams he play for? He plays. For, he's back with the Hornets. So let me go talk to them. Because Trey Finder, I, I feel like I, I need to finesse them real quick. Oh, okay, Aaron Baines. Um, I'm sorry I have to trade you. But they're giving me a pick in this situation. So I'll accept that Dwight Howard is our old lineman. Which... Kind of fits. Now we need a guy that averaged one and a half blocks per game. A lot of these challenges are big man oriented. For sure. Like really big man oriented. So let's go try to splash. Let's go get like a power forward that averaged two blocks. Oh, no, no, no. Is it two blocks? Or is it 1.5 blocks? 1.5 blocks per game. I don't know what this website is, but it's been a W so far. So I'm sticking to it. They got Jaron Jackson Jr. Andre Drummond. I mean, Chris Desperzingis might have to be the guy. And just move him to the four, and then we have Chris Stapps, and and, and we also have uh, a Rudy Gobert on top of that. That's the only thing I can really think about right now, which is kind of trash. Like, all these other guys, I'm not going to be able to trade for Anthony Davis, who's like the big star. 
literally the next guy available is Chris Stapps. Now, the real question is trying to figure out if you're going to be able to. I mean, I know if I give them Donovan Mitchell, they'll say yes, but I don't want to really do that. I don't really want to do that. He plays for the Nuggets. Okay. All right, Nuggets. Let's talk. Let's talk. Let's just have a casual conversation between two very smart GMs. We will give you Marcus Morris Sr. We got to make up $9 million. We'll give you Bogey because neither of these guys fit the challenge. 280 overalls. We will give you a pick. We'll give you that pick we got in the Dwight Howard trade. And now we'll throw you two seconds and that's a deal. Wrap it. Okay. All right. That's, that's not a deal. Do we have a deal if I give you Derrick Jones Jr. and you give us back your worst player, who is this guy who has a stan account on Twitter that tweets me occasionally? No, they're not filling this deal. I don't actually understand why my picks in the last couple videos just have not been valuable. Like my team is not very good at the moment. So why are my picks only one star value? I feel like I have to do like one of those in between trades to get more picks. So let me pick up some random guys in free agency that we can flip to for picks hopefully like come on i just signed this guy to free agency he's a 77 overall now like they got to give us something right somebody's got to have a pick okay i saw christian wood that may not be a pick but he can be a trade piece christian wood's gonna be a, a trade piece then since we didn't get a pick we'll get oh they want a first i don't throw a first in that pick i mean i don't want to throw a first in that trade we can trade for rashawn holmes he ends up being an 80 overall Oh, uh, this kind of sucks. Davis Bertans? Is Davis Bertans an up... I think I trade for Davis Bertans. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think Davis Bertans is the easy trade. No, no. It's going to be Jalen Brunson. Here it is. Here it is. Jalen Brunson is the trade. We make Jalen Brunson a shooting guard, right? Boom. And then we go back to... I forget what team we play for, but we'll find him. And we try to put together this trade. They're... Okay, he's their best player. So it's going to be hard to make this happen. Marcus Morris is what we had. I throw in Jalen Brunson, right? And then I throw in Derrick Jones Jr. Obviously, they need to throw us a player. We'll get this guy. We'll get uh, Corey Joe. Not Corey Joe's contract. Sheesh, not Corey Joe's contract. Hold on. But the rest of these younger guys in their team actually have value. Like, Grant Williams will have one and a half star value, which is basically the same there. Where was... No, oh, we need to throw in Bogey. Bogey's contract is what we need to throw in. Right, so we have these three pieces now. A pick, two picks, deal. Chris Stapps is going to run power four for us. Yeah, we'll make Chris Stapps the power four. He'll stretch the floor for us, and boom, there's our, our defensive lineman. So far, this challenge has been very, very dedicated to the bigs. I need some shooting, some more shooting or something. Let me see what else is on this list. Linebacker. Trade for a player who averages one steal per game and one block per game. It's another situation where we're about to have a... All right, all right. Hopefully, there are some small forwards that fit this. Well, it's going to be Robert Covington. As much as I didn't want to do it, he, he fits the criteria. He's one of the few players that are not a center that fit the criteria. This team's not going to be good enough, bro. <laughs> this team will not be good enough. Robert Covington, trade finder him. They want JJ, which we can do. We can trade Derrick Rose. We can do a trade like this. Dylan Windler, JJ. JJ's in all these trade offers. We can do a trade like this and somehow add the finesse and they give us Kendrick Nunn I'll do that deal I'll do that deal okay so we have our linebacker and we're going to have him run small forward because you know his overall goes up he fits the challenge he's gonna have to stay on the team regardless right now our team is looking cool do not get me wrong we just aren't great and great is what wins championships so let's see what I think the next one is gonna be a cornerback okay so this is for 1.5 steals per game so we have De'Aaron Fox in above here, right? Robert Covington fixed this as well. Okay, a lot of guys here. We have Donovan Mitchell as our star guy at the moment. And so far, he doesn't really fit anything. He's also in a rookie contract, which makes it like a little bit difficult to try to, you know, get the little wiggle room. So I think out of our 1.5 steals per game, we could probably trade for Marcus Smart, DeJounte Murray, Chris Dunn of Fred Van Vliet. Those are the four options that we have. Pretty much every trade imaginable has to do with J.J. Redick. I forget that J.J. Redick is making $13 million a year. I forget. J.J. cannot stay on this team. We're going to have to go back and look at those players with the assisted 80% and trade for somebody that's cheaper because J.J. is not worth his contract in this situation as a 70 
78 overall. We need to go to get another guy who a lot of his points were assisted on. And ladies and gentlemen, this is how you get what I like to call a two for one deal. We're trading JJ Redick for Duncan Robinson, who fits the criteria of over 80% of his shots being assisted on. You can imagine JJ Redick is just like, I'm sorry, Duncan Robinson, just like JJ Redick running off a bunch of screens. And then we also get our cornerback that's getting the steals and Chris Dunn. Derrick Jones Jr. does not fit any of the challenges. So that is a deal. We just kill two birds with one stone. And now we have Duncan Robinson, who's on a one year deal fit onto the team. W. Next it says get a player with an IQ over a B plus. That's where we can have Donovan Mitchell fit in. Beautiful. We were waiting to figure out where to, where to put him in. His IQ was an A minus right here. So he's going to stay on this team. And I think we're on to the last one who shoots 40% from three. Oh my God. How is that even possible? We're on the last thing. So we have cool. This is our starting lineup is not bad whatsoever. I actually dig the starting lineup. We do something like this. Boom, boom, boom. Starting lineup is, is not an L at all. I mean, I would love to replace Robert Covington, but it, it's part of the challenge. He's like the only guy that fits. Our bench, Derrick Rose. Eric Pascal is kind of just chilling on the bench. He doesn't fit any of the challenges, but they only gave us, they gave us 11 challenges with 15 roster spots. So we're going to have players like this that just end up being there, which is cool. Duncan Robinson, Chris Dunn, Chris Dunn and Chris Kendrick Nunn. I almost called him Chris Nunn just because it sounds the same. So, so far we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight nine we're missing something we only okay so these five people fit a challenge six seven eight nine what am i missing jk he only gave us 10 so i'm not missing anything i just need my last thing which is my kicker and that is a player that shoots over 40 percent from three so we can have that be like mm. so so far as far as trade pieces that we can actually trade we do have Eric Pascal, who I would like to keep because he's on a small contract and he's a hooper. I would like to keep him, but in this situation, he may not be able to be kept. We have Pascal, Kendrick Nunn, Daniel Gafford, Garrison Matthews, Kai Bowman as all pieces to be traded. And I think we may have a couple picks too. We have, oh, <laughs> I, I stand corrected. I'm going to sign Felicio and hopefully flip him. I Listen, listen, we're, we're at hard times right now. We're in hard times right now. Is our team a championship contender? Yes. Is our team a championship winner? It's still up for debate. Still up for debate. There's a first round pick that's lottery protected. There's another lottery protected. I cannot believe we're about to flip Felicio for a pick, but a pick is a pick. It's lottery protected, but a pick is a pick. Okay, so let's go see who fits the criteria of shooting over 40% from three. We actually have more options than I thought we were going to have. We have a total of 28 options. 28 options cool and remember the players that we have potentially to trade eric pascal kendrick nunn daniel gafford these are all players on rookie contracts so as cool as it will be to go out there and get a guy like chris middleton we don't have the money for that we're gonna have to trade for somebody that's on a minimum contract or really close to it and looking at all of our options some guys source the top of the list like trading for george hill not out of the realm of possibility trading for Ah, uh, Gary Trent, not out of the realm of possibility. But overall, yeah, this is going to be rough. Not a lot of players here fit the, the challenge. I mean, we can go with Forkon Korkmaz, but that don't make us. I wanted this last trade to be one for a splash, but it don't look like it's going to be. And it's always like this on these challenges. The last trade is always the hardest one for the simple fact that uh, most of the players on the roster can't get traded. And I'm looking over here trying to figure out who's the guy. Because if you go rotation-wise, right, our point guard position's cool. It works. It's not amazing, but it works. Shooting guard position, I like our shooting guards. Small forward, I like small forwards. Power forward is a struggle. Center is cool. Now, we can live in a world where Eric Pascal moves back to power forward, and then we go trade for a small forward to shoot. Or I make Duncan Robinson a small forward. Okay, okay, let's do this. Let's do this. I'm going to make Duncan Robinson a small forward. His overall should go up. Eric Pascal's overall is going to go down, but just by a little bit. So in this new world, boom, what we should be trading for is literally anything. So we're going to trade for Gary Trent, 77 overall. We don't need Kai Bowman, and that first round pick came in handy. Just like that, we have a roster. Just like that, we have a roster. Is it great? No. 
Is it good? Yes. Will it get the challenge done? Po possibly. It might. It might get the challenge done. I'm gonna make Derrick Rose back up point guard, of course. I'm gonna make. I just gotta make. Give me a second. I'm gonna make everybody their backups the right one. Okay, so let's go through things just to make sure we got everything right. Our quarterback has to average over eight assists. Last year, Ricky Rubio averaged about nine assists. Check. Our running back usage rating had to be over 27% last year. Derrick Rose, does this show usage in 2K? Yeah, yes, it does. Derrick Rose usage. Check. Third, wide receiver, 80% of his field goals had to be assisted on. That's going to be Duncan Robinson. Take my word for it. You, you've watched Duncan Robinson play basketball before. You know it's a lot of coming off screens and not a lot of shot creation. Check. Our tight end, three screen assists per game. That is going to be Rudy Gobert. I didn't, I didn't check statistically, but I'm pretty confident that's going to be a check. Our O-lineman, Trey for a player averaging two offensive rebounds. I think that was Chris Stapps, right? No, it wasn't. What did two offensive rebounds? Oh, it was Dwight Howard. Check. Chris Stapps was one and a half blocks, I'm pretty sure. He was. He averaged two blocks, which is a down year, technically. Trey for a player with one steal and one block per game. That's Robert Covington. One and a half steal, 1.3 blocks. Trade for a player with one and a half steals. That is going to be Chris Dunn, who averaged two. Chris Dunn's just a, a menace in the passing lane. Safety, a B-plus IQ. That's going to be Donovan Mitchell. He's a very smart kid. He's not one of those one-and-done players. Maybe he he didn't get it. Was he one-and-done? No, he wasn't one. And, was he one-and-done? I actually do not remember. I don't think he was one-and-done. But his basketball IQ is what matters right now. And is in an A-minus. Um, and the lastly, the kicker, 40% from three. That is going to be Gary Trent, who technically won't even get PT for us, but he's on the roster when he fits. And as you can see, he shot 42, a roundup percentage for him. Uh, score. Oh, no, it tells me to set the scoring preference to running back, wide receiver, quarterback, run a 10-man rotation in the season. I didn't go that far in the challenge reading, ladies and gentlemen. So who is our, our running back was Derrick Rose. Our number one scoring option is going to be coming off our bench for some reason. Our wide receiver was Duncan Robinson. He's off the bench too. Our quarterback is Ricky Root. Why would Ricky, why would our quarterback be the scoring option? I mean, I mean, duh, it makes sense in, in NFL terms. But we're talking about a guy. All right. And then it says uh, run a 10 man rotation. So we have to get it up to 10. And we have to run a zone? Zone usage frequency. We're going to be running a zone. I mean, again, it makes sense. Football, you know, you got zone coverage. All right. Win the chip is what it says is the last part of the challenge. Let's see how the first couple weeks go. Exactly how I expected it to go. It's kind of hard to have our number one scoring option be Derrick Rose coming off the bench. And I'm not starting him over Donovan Mitchell. You know I love me some Derrick Rose. You know this from the deepest depths of my heart. I love me some Derrick Rose. But I'm not starting him. He could get some good minutes. I'm not starting him. I'm not, not over Donovan Mitchell. We're not going to win this championship. Because we're also running the zone in the NBA. And though the zone can be successful. It just won't be. <laughs> it can be. In small instances. It just won't be. Altogether. All right, I'll see y'all once we get to the playoffs. But right now, it looks like we are a playoff team, but maybe not a championship team. Second half of the season was definitely better than the first. Here are all the awards. If you care, I just don't really. Uh, DeJounte Murray, man. DeJounte Murray puts up some crazy numbers in 2K. Like 17, 7.5, or 7.5 is something amazing. So we, we didn't win Coach of the Year, even though we had a better record at 58 wins. Whatever. Do we have any Clippers players? There's a Laker, but no Clippers. Cool. Defensively. We have Rudy Gobert. That makes sense. All right. All right. Here we go. Here we go. We were the number one seed. You know, we talked about how, I mean, it wasn't by much, but a one seed is a one seed. A one seed is a one seed. Let's take a look at our numbers. So even with Donovan Mitchell not being a number one scoring option, he ended up scoring the most points because it's Donovan freaking Mitchell. So of course he's going to score. Uh, Ricky Rubio averages 13 and nine as the third option. F almost 40% from the field from Robert Covington. So that's kind of cool. First round, we're going against Utah, who have Mike Conley, Derek White, Brandon Ingram. I mean, this team's good. This team's good. Brandon Ingram and Jaron Jackson Jr. is a solid three and a four for sure. We're up 3-1, though. And hopefully, I mean, I am playing with the Clippers, so I might blow those. 
we're going to get to the Lakers in the second round, who have Cal Lowry, Paul George, Harrison Barnes, Al Horford. This team is solid. This team is just really, really solid. We have 290 overalls, so that we have a little bit of an upper hand. Let's see how it goes. The Battle of LA. Derrick Rose off the bench. Come on, man. Keep it going, D Rose. C can D Rose win Finals MVP off the bench? That would be something. I mean, we're about to sweep the Lakers. We swept the Lakers. Okay. All right. We get to the Conference Finals. We go against Kemba, Bruce Brown. Good defender. Defensively, this team looks pretty solid. And then they got Jokic and, and Kemba Walker, who end up on the same team very often in these videos. It just works that way. Game one is a loss. We could not contain Kemba. All right. Game two is going to be better. Hopefully. It was. It was because we won. And Kemba still had an okay game, but we, we put up more points in them, and that's all that really matters at the end of the day. We're up 2-1. We might pull this check. Wait, what was that? Wait, what did that box score say? Hold on. I got to go back. Duncan Robinson smacking a three-point shot. We might pull off this challenge. It will be incredible. It's 2-2. 3-2. We can't shorten the rotation. And we get to the championship. Clippers. I did it. We did it. We're going against Kyrie, Matisse Steibel, John Isaac, Larry Nancy. We're about to win a championship. Oh, my God. Thank you. I mean, I'm not saying this completely. Oh, it's 2-0. We don't blow those around here. 3-0. Listen, I was so certain that we weren't going to win this championship because when it comes to these type of challenges where I'm rebuilding on the fly, it can be really, really bad, especially because I don't be reading the criteria until the very last second. So it can go real, real bad. Luckily, we put it together. I'm sure. I'm pretty sure that you could put together a way better team than what I did. We won a championship, so I'm not complaining. But it's definitely not one of the better teams I put together. Be sure to leave a like. I'm sure y'all going to spam the birthday wishes in the comment section as well. And I appreciate all of that. I appreciate all the love over the past couple of years. You guys have, I mean, I, I've, listen, we've, we've been through, if you've been here for a long time, we've been through a lot together from a lot of different set changes from my parents' room to my first apartment to living in the house and recording in the basement to having this full set and... Oh, well, this is not going to work. But you get what I'm saying. I appreciate all the love over the past couple years. And hopefully we have many, many years together to grow and uh, get better. Thank you all so much. I'll be back. Peace.